Well, welcome on this wonderful Thursday. Is it a good Thursday? It's wet. Everyone is very subdued. Is it because of the rain? Subduing us? Maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. <laughs> okay, so here we go. I think it's always extraordinary to find, you know, see the mug shots, see the, uh, um, you know, when someone is, is arrested and see what they look like. Here you have Rosa Parks, you know, being with her with her little number uh, being arrested. And there is Martin Luther King Jr., who has been arrested a number of times and booked all that. So it just brings a whole different perspective and meaning to this. All right. So a few things. We're going to start with some heavy handed news here with deadline for any missing work is Wednesday, June 2nd. And if you are not passing the class, uh, I will see you in my class on June 4th. All right. So it's very imperative that you stay on, on top of things. And if you are not passing, uh, I will see you on June 4th. I do have the, the uh, okay from administration, and that has been shared well by the administration to us that if you are not passing, we'll see you on June 4th to get yourself caught up. So let's avoid that, please. Let's just get that stuff in. Uh, we, I said we'll have about four summatives, and today we'll, we'll start a third uh, summative. So that means next week we will be having our fourth one as well. So with that, any questions, comments, concerns, those at home? Any questions, comments, concerns? All right. Could impact you as well. So let's take care of business. Now, um, you had some homework that was due, and that was the legal challenges uh, to uh, segregation, and we're talking about the Supreme Courts. And so what, what is uh, at least one or two things that we may have learned about those challenges? All right. A lesson learned or just something in general about these challenges. And it would really be nice to see some involvement here from those at home as well. Unmute or put into the chat so I can get a sense that we know what's going on. Something learned about the legal challenges. What do you got? Even when like those big decisions were made, like it didn't change right away for people to actually participate in that. Yep, that is that's that's a really good point. Um, rulings can happen, but rulings are only as effective or has true meaning when it is actually implemented. And so that's the hard part. That really is the hard part. Um, that's not to underscore the, all, the, all the effort that went to get that case before the Supreme Court, uh, because that was very momentous as well. But it is, you know, as we saw in, in that video clip yesterday about Brown versus Board of Education, that's a unanimous decision. But um, getting the schools desegregated is another thing. And when you had the Little Rock Nine, finally a president, Dwight D. Eisenhower, he finally had to do something about it. So there wasn't going to be mass chaos in, um, in Little Rock and so he had to federalize the troops and send them in. So there you've got the Supreme Court and now the executive branch. But that is years after Brown versus Board of Education happened. All right. Yes, that's a very good point that was mentioned in the chat that they, they build off each other. All right. Um, and that the states. Right. Education is decided by the state. What we learn in Minnesota is could be different than what you learn in Wisconsin. Bottom line. 
and how we run our system in Minnesota is definitely going to be different than how it is run in Georgia. And so what was, um, they, they, they used the phrase that was a phrase that was used even before the Civil War, a thing called states' rights. And they said education is states' rights. And so um, when we look at the uniqueness of our education system, it is because states get to determine it. And so they are going to be slow in making the change. Very good point. All right. Um, so today we are going to build on those efforts of the legal challenges and find other ways to challenge and end segregation. In, and this is primarily happening in, in the South, but we can find that civil rights, these types of issues can be found throughout the United States at that time as well. And so um, this really is, again, like I had said, trying to uh, change the social fabric of, of the United States here. Now, I have a video clip here that's going to kind of lead us into attempts to end segregation because it's going to take more than just legal challenges. It's going to take more than just Supreme Court rulings to really end segregation. So I want to show a little video clip here. Uh, we'll probably take maybe about eight minutes here, I think, that we'll look at. Um, and views of the individuals who engage in the civil rights movement, some of the actions, um, and some kind of overall views on, on again, attempting to end segregation, and then we'll go from there. Because this will be our third summit to peace. All right, so let's give me, give me a moment here. All right, and let's see if I can get this started. Freedom is very much entangled with the freedom of every other man. So I'm fighting for my own freedom here. Are you scared? Yes, I'm very much afraid. Everyone here is. In a 10 year period, in the 1950s and 1960s, America fought a second revolution. It was fought in the South by black people and white. It was fought in the streets, in churches, in courts, in schools. It was fought to make America be America for all its citizens. These were America's civil rights years. I take it then that you are advocating Negroes in New York to stay out of these national chain stores. Oh no, that's not true. I'm advocating that American citizens interested in democracy should stay out of chain stores. I have thought for a long time that Negroes should be allowed to sit at the counters where we are served downtown. This is just a part of many things that I think they should be allowed to do. All the people of the South are in favor of segregation. And Supreme Court or no Supreme Court, we are going to maintain segregated schools down in Dixie. We're willing to be beaten for democracy, and you misuse democracy in the streets. You beat Why don't people. You get out in front of the camera and go on. It doesn't matter being in front of the camera. It's a matter of, the camera, oh, it's a matter of facing it. your shirt yeah, yeah, and then hide your blows. Go on. It was a clear engagement between those who wished the fullness of their personalities to be met and those that would destroy us physically and psychologically. You do not walk away from that. This is what movement meant. Movement meant that finally we were encountering on a mass scale the evil that had been destroying us on a mass scale. You do not walk away from that. You continue to answer it. I always
always think of uh, what Matthew Jr. told me. And when he called, when he called from the jail, he said, he said, be cool, mother. <laughs> and that was very uh, trying, and yet it was amusing, too. <laughs> He's telling me to be cool at this point. <laughs> come to see that the end we seek is a society at peace with itself, a society that can live with its conscience. And that will be a day not of the white man, not of the black man. That will be the day of man as man. It was a hard fight, challenging America's basic beliefs. What is an inalienable right? What is equal treatment under the law? What is liberty and justice for all? It was a hard fight, but the prize was freedom, and no American could afford to lose. All right, um, just in that little clip, all right, so you got a little montage here of uh, the civil rights in action here. And um, when you look at uh, some of the ideas, like what uh, Julian Brown is the name, or excuse me, um, Julian Bond is the name of the narrator here. And he talks, you know, about, you know, who, what is an American and inalienable, what is inalienable rights and all that. Again, those are things that we find in our, our documents, like the Declaration of Independence and the U.S. Constitution, right? And so the Civil Rights Movement, again, is analyzing that and getting us to come to terms with that. And so um, civil rights, in many ways, is applying to all. Uh, anything in there that 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 kind of resonates with you or you have a question about just in that little clip I think some things that stand out in here they talk about revolution fought and war revolutionary fought in war so in many ways they look at you know, again, this is going to war and uh, changing again uh, the social fabric. But they look at that revolutionary. I had asked, like, the counterculture, is it a revolutionary movement? All right. All these, in some ways, are revolutionary movements if you're looking at to change. Now, the one guy from the South um, talked about segregation. Did he appear that he was ready to change? Oh, no. No. There will be a guy that would be uh, George Wallace would talk about, you know, segregation um, forever. And so changing a way of life, changing a frame of thinking, all that needs needs to happen here. And another point that was brought up is that, you know, it's an American issue. It is. Now, what is going to highlight a lot of these issues that is going to become a very powerful tool for the civil rights movement and other movements in general is if we're sitting here in the CG or we're sitting here, sitting in Bawabic, Minnesota or Keokuk, Iowa, uh, are we going to be aware of what is happening down in Money, Mississippi or in Montgomery? Alabama or Albany, Georgia? Are we are we going to find out about what happens down there if we're sitting here in the CG? Do we kind of understand what I'm getting at? 
how we're going to how we're going to learn about these events at that time if it was 1963 newspaper it's going to be highly televised the media is going to be there the spotlight is going to be there and that's going to bring pressure because again part of the civil rights movement or it's about nonviolence is to highlight and showcase um the aggression against you and that's why martin luther king jr who are advocating nonviolence, and the others are are telling them you, you take the punch you take the billy club to the head you let your teeth get busted out except those body blows again the, these are these are things that are being highlighted and it, it's going to get the desired results it's going to be slow at times, but it's going to get the, the, the desired results. So the power of the media here is going to be, and that one guy had mentioned about mass scale. This is going to be mass scale. And again, a lot of the protesters, they're young people. Young people. Think of that one mother who said, you know, where she's like her son's child, be cool, be cool. You know, tell him I got arrested. Be cool. She's kind of laughing and crying at the same time. Um, during uh, Birmingham, when when Martin Luther King Jr. had gone to Birmingham, uh, there was a children's march, and um, right there, the children's march in 1963, and dogs and water hoses are going to be sprayed on. Uh, Children or young adults, your age, and that's being spotlighted right on TV. And John F. Kennedy is our president, and he's like, "Oh, we're gonna have to do something about this." So, um, again, I look at that little little clip. There's a lot of little nuggets there, and this is as uh, Julian Bond had said: these are the big years of the civil rights movement. But the civil rights movement really doesn't completely stop, as you saw from some of those uh, court cases. But if we look at the, the, the high point of the civil rights movement from 1950 to 1973, this big one. All right. With that, let's go to Schoology, please, here. And let's open up um, the attempts to end segregation in the South. Okay? And this is what our activity looks like here. So if you open that up, attempts to end segregation in the South, uh, you're going to come from the perspective of a uh, reporter. Right, and I'm not going to ask you to create uh, the actual news articles, right? But instead, you've got your journalist's notebook, all right? So you can use Google Docs or you can use Notability here. So uh, again, there's a lot of efforts here, and so today we want to take a look at some of the events uh, that is uh, playing a role here as well, and where where they took place. So some of these things that we're going to look at, yes, you have done, like the Supreme Court cases you have done, uh, but there are some others that you may not have done. You know, like this issue with um, voting rights and the 24th Amendment, all right, big, and the March on Selma. These are all taken on voting rights, and they're taking on things like, like, um, like this, which is a voter... Uh, literacy test that voters must take. Here, I'm going to turn my light on here. So I have a copy of uh, Louisiana literacy test here that people would have to take. All right. Um, but I'm getting ahead of myself here. So this activity is going to be solo, done to either Notability or Google, Google Docs. And you're going to choose to attend. So you're going to be a news reporter because the media is going to be very important here. And so you need to attend three of the events. We got four categories. You attend three of the events from the list below. So if you pick transportation, doesn't mean you have to do Montgomery bus boycott and as well as freedom rides, you pick one or the other. All right. So you have some choices. So maybe you go freedom rides, Little Rock nine and March on Selma or whatever combos that you have, but they different, different topic, 
and then find an event in it. Again, these we've already dealt with with the um, legal challenges, so that might be an easy one to go with. So you need to imagine that you are a young civil rights activist, and for each event, you should have a page of your reporter notebook, right? And this is not going to be like just, you know, here's what happened, all this stuff, you know, very uh, factual based and all that stuff. You need to have a little bit of emotion in it. This is what I'm seeing. You know, it's like if last last year, if you're watching what is unfolding uh, in Minneapolis and St. Paul after uh, George Floyd and you're a reporter and you're like seeing all the things, you know, what's it sound like? What's it feel like? What's it look like? You know, electrifying, traumatic, scary, um, you know, heavy, all that stuff. So you need to have some details. Yes. You need to have the details. This is what's going on. Supreme Court rules this. Outside the courtroom, this is going on. Here's what people in four are saying, uh, approving the decision. These are opposing the decision or the Voting Rights Act, the march on Selma. You know, the march on Selma is sometimes, the first one's called Bloody Sunday. So if you do the march on Selma, there's multiple attempts that need to be brought into it. All right, outcome, hand-drawn visual or picture would be great or you can find the actual one as well, all right? Because again, this is highly, and of course, for each event, to what extent did this event help end segregation in uh, the South, all right? So like, again, this, um, this idea of voting rights and the 24th Amendment, well, more of the Voting Rights Act of 65 was to outlaw these things called literacy tests. You know, they're ask, they'll ask you some questions, for instance, and, and, and you had to get them right. You had to get, if you're African-American, you had to get them all right. If you weren't African-American, um, you may not even have to take this. They might just say, oh, go ahead, just register. Or if you got, say, 5% of them wrong, they'll still say, all right, you still passed. But for an African-American, if they got one wrong and they took too much time, or whatever it was thrown out so like one of the questions would be like the mail carried is paid by the a city b state c the united states government what would the answer be who pays for the mail being carried to your house u.s government does u.s government does absolutely all right the president of the united states is elected by a the Congress, B, by the direct vote of the people, C, by the people through electors. Mm -hmm. e. Well, is the electors like the electoral like college, or is it when like a person you elect or the may elect? No, it, it, it's it's re referencing the electoral college. Yep. So it's C. Absolutely. All right. How about this? The president of the United States must be at least A. 25 years old, B, 30 years old, C, 35 years old. Yeah, the old, you go with the older one. Yeah, C. All right. Oh, the church that we attend is chosen, A, by the national government, B, by ourselves, C, by Congress. Yeah, ourselves, so B. So things like that, all right. Um Money is coined by A, the states, B, the people, C, the national government. Who coins our money? Yeah, the national government does, absolutely. All right, uh, the Congress cannot establish A, churches, B, courts, C, banks. Ooh. What can't... What can't Congress establish? A, churches, B, courts, C, banks. What do we think? Church. Churches, absolutely churches. Can't. Tough one, huh? Or you might think, or like, for real, they're asking that question. That's kind of, but yes. I asked that. How about this? <laughs> the tax we pay on our property is A, a business tax, B, a property tax, C, an inheritance tax. 
Yeah, it's property tax. All right, there we go. But um, if you if you don't own property, you might not be able to answer that question, or hopefully, you just put things into context. Those were on the books till 1965. All right, so the Voting Rights Act of 65 is going to be a big part of it. All right. All that. All right, now you just answered a bunch of those questions and you did fairly good. well. So next year when you do the citizenship test, you're, gonna, you're, gonna, you're just gonna go crazy on it. All right, 15 points. This activity is going to be due Monday, 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 Monday. All right, so that means today we'll work on it uh, and we'll have some class time on Monday to work on this as well. But we're looking for what, the attempts. And so again, all these areas are focused, uh, bringing in, yes, the U.S. Supreme Court, but it's also bringing in the U.S. Congress. It's bringing in the U.S. President. It's bringing in grassroots organizations and individual efforts. So this one is bringing in multiple groups into trying to end segregation. So this mass scale movement is happening. All right, is a happening. All right, so any questions for clarity? Do you actually have to write the article? No, no. This is like if you're a reporter and we see a notebook, it could be, you know, uh, however you organize it. But these are your general thoughts, making sure you're hitting all this as well hitting all this. Yes, we need to get an understanding of the event, but we also need to get an understanding of this. And the outcome is ultimately, through all the efforts, what did they get? What did they get? Okay, so with that, tomorrow we will not have a, a live Google Meet, so you don't have to worry about checking in tomorrow, all right? So I'll give you some time. Uh, so tomorrow, in theory, you should be working on this, uh, but we know ultimately Friday, uh, Monday, Monday the 24th, this is due. Okay, questions, comments, concerns?